that's my name, and that's the question I'm going to answer tonight. You could be wondering, hmm, that can't be a question, it hasn't got a question mark. But if you translate like the last bite that translates in us into sort of binary, which, uh, which is a question mark, and you're probably wondering what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> so right, anyway, that's part of it. But if you cut and paste this and put it into a binary translator on the internet, you'd have come out with a question. <laughs> We need to talk about data, which is a sort of reference to the um, film title. We need to talk about Kevin in more than one ways. So I'm not actually going to answer that question, but I hope to talk about issues around data. So you start questioning data and technology. And you might ask, why did I put the question in front of But there's two reasons. I wasn't too sure what I was going to talk about, so I thought I'd put those in the awesome ones. And then I'll trip them around later, which is quite important. And the other example is how technologists hide behind technology and jargon. Because people don't question us, they think we know what we're talking about. And we don't always. So, and that's an issue about trust, and I think we need to be questioned. So, how come I'm talking about this? What qualifies me? Well, I say I'm a conceptual and data artist, only because I don't want to get them on the with painters. I'm currently the artist in residence at the VLA, responding to data. I've worked 30 years in the tech industry, programming and designing computers from mainframes through to the sort of smartphones. And I'm also a trained cabinet maker. And I'd say overall, my work is a sort of queer feminist agenda with a socio-political edge. Which I think <laughs> so here's an example of the last sculpture I made, and it's a self-evaluating artwork. It's bloody massive. It's about four and a half metres, weighs half a tonne. I've got over 80 pieces of neon, lots of programming, oh, welding and all sorts of things. And I make the work. I've probably said that by myself. And um, I got a woman to blow the neon, so I put it my menopausal masterpiece because we're both women over 50. <laughs> it's quite important for me to work with women and work in sort of, um, I think, like welding and programming where women are quite excluded to actually to um, look at the process and to understand the materials. And I've written some complex programs which I call the endorsers that run overnight that actually evaluate how much the artwork's worth. And that looks at social media, financial markets and adjust the price based on my race, sexuality, gender and other such things. So, I mean, in terms of me being a woman, it sort of racks off a good old 80%. Because it's generally our work sells for a lot less. Um, I mean, this is work's going to be on the White Chapel uh, from June to August if you want to see it. And actually, the other two bumps are doing an article on it because they're quite interested in artists that are sort of confronting the sort of values on the um, art market. One of the technical drawings I made, and I keep in my studio just to like prove that I build, sort of build the work. <laughs> Many artists nowadays don't build their own work, and, and as again, I said it's really important for me to do. And I do actually get challenged when you buy men, and it's like going, Oh, you didn't build that, so I can just hold up the drawings, I'm not very good at confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is about the VA residency, okay. Um, I was here as part of the Bari group, which are downstairs, but I don't know why they've said me here, they separated me. Um, and I was tasked with responding to data in a meaningful way, an intelligent way. And I think why they said that is that I think a lot of people or artists use data without giving relevance to the meaning of data. So, for example, I could have gone to the museum and taken their environmental data and every time the humidity went over 10% and made a chicken lay an egg. And so but they wanted something that sort of fed back more into the institution. Um, and what's very interesting about the environment, after working in the tech industry for 30 years, it was kind of like walking to Charlotte Perkin Gilman's novel. She wrote sort of female utopian novels. I mean, the research unit is just full of women, which is fantastic. I think it was a man or two there. I bet it is. But it's a completely different environment. It's, um, it's not competitive and it's incredibly supportive. I don't have my confidence challenge every day. It creates a very open, supportive environment for learning, research and development. People aren't afraid to ask questions. And they say they don't know things, which they don't in IT. And you're not in fear of being put down or perceived as having a weakness, which again, in IT, you can get quite heavily attacked for that. So that sort of raises questions about uh, male-dominated industries, especially the tech industry that we're becoming very dependent on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see the tech industry, I was quite serious, it's very much like sort of car mechanic plumbing industry. I mean, Carmen Kelly, just a few quotes, like women are being forced to pay premiums up to 28% more for the same repairs as men in the car industry. Plumbing, um, women are sort of quoted up to 53% more than men, and elderly sort of as well a third extra than men. And the tech industry is, is really not very dissimilar. We're vastly overcharging clients, we're relying on people's lack of knowledge, and we don't do anything to help this, and we're also blinding them with sort of technical bullshit. 
I mean, in, in a way, it's like a ten, I mean, it is like a confidence trick game. And I mean, the VNA systems haven't been immune to this. I don't want to go into that in detail, but our two external suppliers, not through the internal people. And are things changing? Well, I can't see them changing. I mean, I went to a VR Expo at Excel recently, um, which was mainly full of men. And you think VR, relative new technology, you could do great things, but what were they doing? Shooting games, military applications, car advertising, porn. And then there's a small sort of subgroup of breakaway women, women in VR. And they were looking at how VR could benefit society. And educational issues. And what was so interesting is, is when they started giving a talk, all the men went away, and it's just a small sort of like a few women there. That's not good news for us. And this was a piece I did based on a conference I went This is the sort of rendered CAD drawing. Um, so I went to a conference where some guy was just talking absolute bullshit. <laughs> and all the students were just sitting there writing the notes, and I was just thinking, how many dissertations is this crap going to end up being? <laughs> and I just wrote this down on the post it, like bullshit's every confidence becomes the truth, and stuck a Carl Andre um, sculpture. He pushed his wife out the window in front of it. Um, and I just think we should be very, very suspicious about people who are unquestioning confidence, and we need to value people who doubt. Mm. A couple more stats, 61%, um, that's the probably pay difference between men and women in the IT industry and also 64% is uh, people in the IT industry because they're probably because they're queer. So we're sort of building up a very sort of <sighs> skewed, I wish also corrected to screw, you know, actually quite like that. <laughs> we're building up a very screwed industry that we're actually becoming quite heavily dependent on. Right, oh, that's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more embarrassing because I just really wanted to talk about sex, but in relation to gender and the IT industry and terminology in general, and I made a little stupid mistake this afternoon with Googling for an image. And I. <laughs> 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 I've seen things today that I. <laughs> so, I mean, there's two definitions of sex. I mean, relating to sexual activity and male female categorisation of adults based on the reproductive. And basically, I'm. Um, Looking at male female, but we always use the term gender. Gender, which is a social construct and really nothing to do with sex, because I hate people sniggle when you say sex, don't they? So, I mean, I'm going to continue to use the terminology gender when I mean sex, but also the sort of point to the shifting terminology, which happens with um, IT. I mean, no one really understands each other. I mean, like at the VA, I might speak to digital curators, and although I've worked in the industry for 30 years, I've no idea what they're talking about. And I think people are trying to standardise on terminology. I mean, people see stuff sort of not to live, and, and get a bit embarrassed asking questions after a while. So I'm going to give you some examples. Like data, data, that's VA data. Data is information, information is data. Um, big data is just lots of information. I mean, it doesn't have to be digital, and it's not that hard to understand. Right, did you know you can do scrambled eggs in an oven? <laughs> and I didn't know that until I was Googling recipes, because a recipe is an algorithm. An algorithm is just a list of instructions. So again, it's not that complicated. So when you start thinking about artificial intelligence and other things like that, you just think it's just a list of instructions that you are giving it, and the data is just information. It's a lot easier to sort of engage. And this is a really great quote that I read in The Guardian the other day. The world digital, the word digital means everything and nothing. Focusing on it is the biggest distraction of a generation. And I'll just read the rest of it. When electricity became widespread at the turn of the 19th century, it was just business in the electrical age. There weren't electrical consultants or electrical agencies. When new technology is really understood, it fades into the background. All the proof needed, they were not really digested the power of digital. I think I don't want to actually. Right, there's a bit of data there.